Good afternoon, Saints. I wanted to get on here and make one more video for my Gen Z, my shorts. Um, <clears throat> if you have been cheated on or lied on, listen, be the bigger person. Don't, don't, um, don't stoop down to their level. <clears throat> God is calling us to love the unlovable. He's raising up an army of his children who will be humble, who will be pure in heart. Listen, this is when you're going in the refining fire. This is when your faith is being tested. Whenever someone lies on you and you're able to pray for them. Whenever you pray for them, that's when the Holy Spirit comes in and changes your heart. God will come in and do a supernatural work in you. And then you will be able to actually forgive them. You don't act your way into doing dishes. You get up, you start doing them, and then you feel it. Well, sometimes love is not a feeling. Love is an action. So guys, God is calling his children to rise up, to, to do, be the bigger person, do the right thing. Forgiveness is not for earnest. We have to forgive those who lie on us. And if we, even if they cuss us out and we forgive them, that, that might turn on their conscience. That might, they'll be like, oh wow, I, I told them off and they didn't do anything to me. Then that turns their conscience on. That makes them like, wow, that's the first person that's ever not said something back to me. So um, I wanna read um, 1 Peter 1, 7 to you guys. It says, so that the test of the genuineness, the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, result in praise and glory and honor. So our faith is being tested every day and it's more precious than, than gold, but it, it's actually a fire, a refining fire that our faith goes in. And um, <clears throat> sometimes we have to sacrifice for God. You know, whenever uh, Solomon made the sacrifice, uh, and Samuel of the um, the offering to God it was a sweet smelling sacrifice but it was it was like it was his money it was his time it was um, it was it was what moves God and so God is calling us to to sacrifice he's calling us to sacrifice some of our desires some of our our opinions um, our time, our comfort. Sometimes what God's calling us to do isn't always isn't always comfortable. Peace and comfort are two different things. So just because it's not comfortable doesn't mean you can't have peace about it. So you're not you're not entitled to scrolling on the phone for for three hours if you're a child of the Most High God. We need to get out there. We need to share His Word. We need to be in the streets. We need to be. Um, not forsaking the gathering, getting on here together, and um, forming bonds of unity uh, where brothers are born in adversity, brothers in adversity, brothers in the spirit, brothers that you may not have anything in common with, except for that my spirit bears witness with your spirit that we're children of the Most High God. And, um, and just to form bonds and, and break through the barriers, break through the barriers and God will increase you He'll begin to come in and deliver you, set you free. It's like an onion sometimes. It's not a microwave deliverance. God wants to come in and move, but He needs you. He needs your surrender. He needs your time. He needs your desire sometimes. Sometimes you would rather um, go lay down and scroll than, than to get on here and and or, or go to church and be in unity and, and, and gather in, in one accord and wait on the Holy Spirit. But Isaiah 40, 31 says, those that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and got, not grow weary. They will walk and will not faint. So, um, so every time I see a defeated Christian, every time I see a Christian that, that is tired, a lot of times it is because they have, they're, they're on their phones. They're, 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 they're like this. They're, they're worried about what people think. Worry about what God thinks. Worry about what God thinks. Um, make, make it a point to be selfless. Make it a point. 
to be selfless. Sometimes whenever you're sad and you're caught up in your own feelings, if you will go and help somebody else, you will feel better. It'll make you feel better and um, it'll change your heart and your heart will get refined and this is where revival starts. Revival starts in, in softened hearts. So it's not always um, reading your word, being in your word. It's doing the will of God. Doing the will of God is communion with God as well. So be in the hands and feet of Jesus, loving the unlovable. We owe no man nothing except for the love of Christ. Um, so we need to be loving the people who persecute us, blessing them. Be in the hands and feet of Jesus, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, because it's not them. It's a spirit that done God in your brother and caused them to lie on you, caused them to cuss at you. It's not your brother. They were not created by God to do that. So, so give them forgiveness, and, um, and it's not a feeling sometimes. It's something you just do. You just do it. It's an action, and you, you ask Holy Spirit to help you. Start out by praying for them. Start out by blessing them. Tell them how good they look. Tell them, ask Holy Spirit for a word of knowledge to help you. Our territory isn't branching out and going um, to New York or if we live in Florida and, and setting people, sharing the gospel with them. Our territory are people at our jobs, people in our homes, people in our families, um, people at the businesses we go to every day. We never stop being children of God. We are always on the clock. We are always on the clock of Jesus. So be the hands and feet of Jesus. When you see somebody hungry, um, feed them. If you see somebody thirsty, give them water. If, you, if someone needs encouragement, encourage them. Because life and death are in our, in our tongue. You know, a tongue does set a fire in the spiritual realm. So if you can picture this, picture whenever you're speaking fear words, whenever you're speaking bad words, you're actually setting a fire in the spiritual realm. You're putting, you're planting a seed that will soon grow up into a garden. So if you're planting seeds of fear, then, then, then you're going to have a, a full garden of fear and, and, and the devil's will for your life and of destruction. You're going to have a garden of destruction coming up. If you're planting words of faith, you're going to have a garden of, of abundant life coming up. So picture it like this. So you've planted words of fear throughout the day, seeds, and so they're this big, and you've planted words of faith, so maybe they're this big. So how many fear plants do you have, and how many faith plants do you have? How many bad words have you said? So what does your garden look like? What do you smell like in the spirit? So all five senses that we have in the natural realm, we also have those senses in the spiritual realm. So our life, our prayer life, is a sweet smelling sacrifice to God, a spiritual aroma. Jesus dying on the cross, that was a sacrifice, a sweet incense, an aroma to God. So um, the prayers of the saints are an aroma to God. When you pray for your brother, it's an aroma to God where he then imparts grace, supernatural Holy Spirit, fire in you that helps you do his will, that helps you have the desire to do his will and gives you the power to carry it out. And this is what you want. You want to walk in the supernatural. And this is how you do it. This is how you walk in the abundant life is you walk by faith and not by sight. You call things that be not as though they are. You be sneaky in the spirit and you don't speak those words of fear. You don't speak your feelings because a lot of times the, the things that you feel aren't even your feelings. They are the devil putting things in your mind. So thoughts of jealousy, thoughts of hate. You say, no, I love them in the name of Jesus. I love them. Thank you, Jesus, that I love them. Father, bless them. Bless them. They hurt my feelings. You know what? Bless them, Father. Father, why why did that hurt my feelings? Father, reveal to me what you're trying to teach me in this time. Because our faith is being tested in the fire. And faith without works is dead. And how do we work it, guys? By, by watching God's word to perform it. As soon as Jesus got through doing all of those miracles in Matthew, um, as soon as he began revival, he stopped and he did the Sermon on the Mount. Well, that's because he's worried about our character. 
God is going to come and back up His children who glorify Him with their actions, with their word and deed. So we've got to glorify God. And this is how we walk in authority. This is how we walk in the supernatural. Not by my, not by power, but by His Spirit. So say, Holy Spirit, put a guard at the door of my lips that I don't speak any fear words, that I don't speak any, any anger words, that I don't have any jealousy or selfish ambition. Father, make me selfless. Father, change my heart. Give me the heart of Christ. Give me the mind of Christ. So, um... Every time we feel the will of God is uncomfortable, that is where we're being refined. That is where we know it's. It, we should be excited. We should be excited when we're when we're uncomfortable, when our faith is being refined, because this is whenever we will know what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is whenever God is answering our prayers. Sometimes being uncomfortable means. Um, holding your tongue. Sometimes you want to stand up for yourself. Sometimes you want to cuss so bad. But let God hear, let God fight your battles. The battle is the Lord's. In the uncomfortable place and the surrender, the place of surrender, the place where you obey Him, that's where the anointing is gonna is gonna increase. That's where your anointing is gonna increase. You'll always find it that through your whole life. God is going to be ask, asking you to sacrifice comfort in some way because you're always going to be growing in your life with Christ. It's a metamorphosis as a butterfly. You're going to be becoming a butterfly in the Lord. So you get more anointing each time you sacrifice. Peace is not comfort. You can have peace and still be uncomfortable. Um, when you're comfortable, you're, you're not growing. Stretching makes growing happen. So you gotta stretch. Your faith is a rubber band and only works if you stretch it. So whenever you're stretching, you're, you're making that growth happen. Whenever you're uncomfortable, growth is happening. Your heart is being softened. You're, you're becoming more like Jesus. And don't, um, the will of God is not always comfortable. But there is joy in it. There is hope. It is so amazing. Um, a sacrifice of comfort is a sweet smelling aroma to God. And remember, receive God's love in these times. God is so proud of you whenever you're doing this. This is what will make you strong. Knowing how proud the Father is of you. That you're showing, you're, you're showing it to others. That you're showing love to others. Remind yourself that you're obeying God. In, in 2 Samuel 24, 18, David offered a sacrifice to the Lord and God was moved. It kept him out of defeat and it kept him moving into abundant life. Supernatural resources from God. Don't you want to be under supernatural resources from God? Um, Sam, Psalms 133 says, for when brothers dwell together in unity, that's where the Lord commands a blessing. So I would rather be under a commanded blessing than any gift, than have any gift of the Spirit or anything, which the gifts of the Spirit are great, don't get me wrong. But being under a commanded blessing of the Lord on your life is an amazing, amazing thing. Um, your heart is going to get refined. You're going to have supernatural resources from God. You're going through the fire and you're coming out like gold. You're coming out like Jesus. So when none of your sacrifice is going to waste, none of it, God sees every bit of it. Your heart is being refined and your sacrifice is, is counting as a part of the refining fire, as if gold is being tested, like it says in Peter, in 1 Peter 1.7. So that the test of the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, result in praise and glory and honor. So remember, we're glorifying God. We are glorifying God, and this is how we walk in the abundant life. We begin to take authority with our words. We, we watch God's word to perform it. We watch what we watch. We, we, sacrifice, we, we sacrifice our desires. We sacrifice our comfort. We sacrifice our time. 
we actually sacrifice our tithes, our money. Where, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if you're given 10% and it's not really a sacrifice, well, then you're not blowing God out of the park. So this is where I really started seeing God begin to move in my life and He was able to bless me. It's whenever I made a sacrifice of, of my finances to God and He took the love of money, the thought, of what am I going to buy next? What do I want next? I don't even have that anymore. And it's the most free feeling in the world. There is nothing this world has to offer that is more precious than His Holy Spirit. Nothing more precious than the grace that comes from the Holy Spirit to be able to get through this world. It, it gives you strength. It gives you the desire and the power to do what pleases God. And it is just the most amazing thing. So if you love money, you'll hate God. So this is another place that God is asking us to sacrifice is in the area of our finances. He wants us to, to give an offering that he, that, that is a sacrifice. You know, if it's something that we're comfortable with, then God knows, God knows every single secret thought we have. So we need to start, um, People that say, oh, I'm not going to take up an offering. Well, you're stopping people from having a blessing. So um, wherever you tithe, make sure it's a sacrifice. Because it doesn't matter what they do with the money. Whenever you're tithing to God, He sees. He sees it. And you should be trying to tithe in a place where you see God moving. Where you see the Holy Spirit. Where God is God is moving and, and, and pray about it. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Pray to God and ask the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, to show you uh, where to tithe and what to tithe. What is a sacrifice? That way, where your heart is, your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So your heart will be where you tithe. God made you this way. A brother asked me the other day when I was getting my hair done, do we have to get on our knees to pray? Yes, if you can get on your knees. God made you this way. It shows you that you are not in control of your life. It gives you peace from anxiety. It gives you peace from depression. It lets you know that God is in control, that this is God's will coming to pass. God writes history, not me. And it takes all of my pride out and it shows me that God is in control. And I know I've done all I can do and God is going to do what I can't do because I honor God. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. So, where you used to think about the things that you wanted to buy, you'll be thinking about giving to others. And um, you'll see all your money as God's every penny. And then, after a while, you won't even... You won't even need it except for things that you actually need. It won't even be something that's on your mind. I used to get like uncomfortable whenever I didn't have any money. Now it doesn't bother me at all. I know that God is my source. It's not money. And that's a very important place to be. You don't don't want, if you love money, you will hate God, the Bible says. So if you're putting your, your, um, your faith in money, your faith can't be in God. So this is a very important place that we need. We do need to talk about. We do need to speak about it. So where you were, you're going to be like, well, I could buy this thing. And God has really blessed me in this season of life. But you know what? I'm not. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to go help the poor. I'm going to, I'm going to help someone in need. And, um, and you don't have to have that. Thing. You might not need that $500 pair of shoes or that $500 purse, you know. God will bless you in His timing and heaven is so much better and having the Holy Spirit is so much better than anything that money could buy. Anything. God wants us to look good and put together, but we need to be sensitive to the seasons and we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And when we tithe, it needs to be a sacrifice. So God is looking for our sacrifice. He's looking for our desires, for our desires to become His desires. Some of them are good, but God's wanting to give us new desires. And He's wanting to, us to, to live for Him and not for ourselves. 
So God is raising up an army of children that will trust God, that will be the hands and feet of Jesus in Acts. After the spirit fell, they sold everything they had and as needed, they gave it to the ones who needed the money. Nobody really um, built a big mansion or anything with the money. So praise the Lord. They, they took care of everyone's needs. And, and, and basic, you know, nobody had to have a Maserati or, or a $5,000 pair of shoes. And, and that's sensible, you know, whenever there are starving kids places, why in the world would we need something that costs that much? Why in the world? I don't think that God would say it's okay to have a million dollar chandelier when there's children that are starving. Every 10 seconds, a child dies of hunger in this world. Count in the United States. And as prices increase, those numbers are expected to rise. So there's no reason we should be buying um, things that we don't need. So your, your heart will always pursue what you value. So as your treasure, even when you're having um, all these struggles, if you put your treasure where you want, your heart will be. It will become your treasure. So if you put your treasure in God, it will, he will become your treasure. So it's good to sacrifice um, in the area of tithes to your God. It, God is getting your tithes. He is smiling down on you whether someone spends your tithes on something or not. You have paid it to God. As long as you're paying it to a ministry, um, you're, doing, you're being obedient to God and you have sacrificed. So I want to pray with you really quick. Father, right now, I pray that you open our eyes, that you help us, Lord, that you help us see where you want us to sacrifice, where you want us to give up our time, where you want us to change our desires. Father, I ask that you keep us from scrolling, keep us from being like the rest of the world. Help us come out from among them. I ask that you open our eyes and give us a, a new new right heart, a new right spirit, a new mind, the mind of Christ in Jesus' mighty name that we may be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus, that we may win souls for the kingdom, that we are the, the witnesses, just as the uh, Acts apostles, that we are walking in abundant life and signs, wonders, and miracles, that we will do exploits, that we will glorify you, my King, and with our lives in, in word and deed. I bind up every demonic power, every unclean spirit, every principality, every evil ruler, every wickedness in high places, trying to stop God, block God, and hinder God, every spirit of poverty, every spirit of lack, every spirit of fear. I bind you now and I command you to go in Jesus' mighty name. Any spirit trying to stop God, block God, or hinder God, any spirit trying to kill, steal, and destroy from these children of God, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. I break your power. I command you to loose these children of God now. They will live and not die. They will walk unharmed. They will kick anything that is evil from their path. They will fulfill their purpose in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Anyone who is sick, I pray healing. I speak healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. As Jesus is, so are you. And you are healed now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Cover them. Cover them. Increase them. Give them words of knowledge. Give them insight. Give them revelation. Give them understanding in Jesus' mighty name. God woke me up with this scripture this week. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Feed my sheep. Why do you think God said that? Jesus said that so many times. Because, guys, we are to do the works he did and greater. So go out and feed his sheep. Love you guys. See you Thursday.